Classic World Tales from Russia, Baba Yaga. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived in a small cottage with her father, who was a widower. The two were very happy together. They would eat stacks of pancakes with jam every morning as they played silly games of peekaboo at the table. Life was happy for them until the day the father decided to take another wife. After that, everything became different. There were no more pancakes with jam, no more games of peekaboo. The girl rarely was allowed to sit at the table anymore because the stepmother blamed anything and everything she could on the little girl. She told the girl's father the girl was too naughty to eat with them and she made her stand in the corner. The stepmother would throw eaten bread crusts at her and tell her to get out of the cottage and go eat by herself. The poor little girl would go out into the old stone shed that they used for the farm animals where she would eat her crusts and cry for the happy days before her stepmother arrived. One day she met a little friend. A little gray mouse sat up on his back legs with his tail curled around him. The little girl was so kind and gentle and she shared her crusts with the small creature. When they had finished the crust together, the small mouse looked up and said, Thank you, kind girl. You have allowed me to share your entire crust, and now, to show you my thanks, I will give you a warning. The old woman you call stepmother is truly a sister to the evil Baba Yaga, the bony-legged witch. If your stepmother ever sends you on an errand to her sister, your new aunt, come and tell me. She has iron teeth and would surely eat you. Oh, thank you for sure, small mouse, said the girl. As she did, she heard the stepmother calling her to do housework, and the girl could not disobey. When she went in, the girl took a good look at the stepmother, and sure enough, she had the very same bony legs, long bony fingers, and quite a long nose. Chills ran through her as she thought of the witch, but she was comforted by the thoughts of her new friend. The next day it happened. After the father left to do his day's work, the stepmother called the girl in. You must go to your aunt in the forest and ask for a needle and thread to mend this shirt for your father, she instructed. But here is a needle and thread, stepmother, the girl replied. How dare you answer back your stepmother, the evil woman roared. You will do as I say and go to your aunt to borrow a needle and thread. I don't know where she lives. How shall I find her? The girl asked. This is your nose. Do you feel that? The old hag said as she pinched the girl's nose hard with her long bony fingers. You must follow the path through the forest until you come to the fallen tree. She's only a stone's throw and a bear's call away from there. Be off now, you wretched girl, said the stepmother, and she handed the girl a small bundle wrapped in a towel. Here is some food for you, should you get hungry along the journey. The girl was afraid and wanted to run to the stone shed to her mouse friend, but she knew the hag was watching. The girl followed the path as she was told until she came to the fallen tree. She was about to keep going on her journey when she spied her little mouse friend sitting on the fallen tree. Oh, my dear friend, cried the girl. Stepmother has sent me on a journey to her sister's house. Whatever shall I do? The mouse looked gently at her. You have a good heart. Take up all the things you find along the path and you will escape. Are you hungry, dear mouse? She said as she opened the towel. To her surprise, she found only stones inside. Look again, dear girl, said the mouse, and as she did, the stones turned into bread and jam. The two friends ate their fill until they could eat no more. Keep the towel, said the mouse. It may be handy to you later. As the girl ran along, she spotted a lovely blue handkerchief with a flowered border. Oh, how pretty, she thought, as she remembered the mouse's advice. The girl picked up the handkerchief and tucked it away into the towel. She ran a little further, and she found a small bottle of oil, which she also collected. Further still, she found a cheerful blue ribbon, and she tucked it away into the towel with the oil and handkerchief. As she neared the house of the witch, she also found some scraps of meat and a small loaf. The girl put all the things she found into the towel. When the girl came to the home of Baba Yaga, she met a high, rusted old gate. The hinges made an awful squeak when she tried them. How lucky I found this oil, she thought, as she poured some onto the gate's joints. Inside the gate was Baba Yaga's cottage. It stood on chicken's legs and walked around the yard. A servant girl was crying into her apron because the old witch was so mean and treated her so badly. The girl offered the servant the handkerchief to dry her tears. Closer to the cottage, a dog sat growling and gnawing at an old crust. The girl gave the small loaf to the dog, who ate it up and licked his lips. The girl went bravely up to the cottage, which bent down towards her on its chicken legs. The girl knocked on the witch's door. Come in, croaked the horrid voice of Baba Yaga. A sickeningly thin cat sat on the floor, looking at a mouse hole. Hello, auntie, said the frightened little girl. 
My stepmother, your sister, has sent me to borrow a needle and thread to mend a shirt for father, she explained, trying not to tremble. Very well, rasped the old hag. You sit here at my loom and continue my weaving while I fetch the needle and thread for you. The old witch then hobbled out the door on her stick-like legs and called to the servant girl. She instructed the servant to make a hot bath ready to scrub the girl clean before she would make a meal of her. She grinned her wicked mouth and her iron teeth grinded back and forth, making a terrible sound. When the servant girl came inside for the jug to make the bath, the girl urged her not to be too quick in her task. Carry the water in a sieve if you can at all, pleaded the girl. The servant girl only smiled but made no noise as she was afraid of the witch herself. The old hag came to the window. Are you weaving, little niece? she moaned. I am, auntie, the girl replied as she gave the cat the meat scraps she had found. Just then, Baba Yaga came to the window again. Are you weaving, little niece? she asked again. I am weaving, auntie, said the little girl. She looked at the cat as he licked his lips and paws. Would you like to escape, kind girl, asked the cat. I would, little cat, the girl confessed. Take the comb from the witch's shelf and take your towel. When the witch is busy in the bathhouse, jump from the step and run into the forest. When the witch begins to chase you, you must listen carefully. When you hear her getting close to you, throw the towel in her direction. It will become a large, wide river. It will take her some time to cross and you will have gotten further from her. But listen carefully still as she will take chase again. When she is close by the second time, throw the comb towards her. It will spring up into such a thick forest she will never get through and you will be safe. But she will hear the loom stop, said the girl woefully. I will fix that, said the cat slyly as he took her place under the loom. The girl did as the cat had said, and when Baba Yaga was not looking, she made a jump from the door. The big dog leapt at her to tear her to shreds, but when he realized she was the one who gave him the loaf, he wagged his tail in thanks. When the rusted old gate saw her coming, it opened silently for her, grateful for the drop of oil she had given. Beyond the gate, she came to a birch tree with a low-hanging branch blocking her way. Quickly, the girl tied it up with a ribbon and ran on her way. After a while, the old bony-legged one came to the window. Are you weaving, little niece? She cackled. Yes, auntie, meowed the cat. The witch knew that was not the girl's voice, and she jumped up into the cottage. She found the cat in a tangle of yarn and became furious. Why didn't you scratch out her eyes, you useless feline? Baba Yaga roared. The cat answered, In all the years I've been with you, you have never given me more than a piece of bone, and she gave me pieces of meat. Baba Yaga flew out the door to the servant girl, whom she similarly scolded. In all the years, said the servant girl, you have never given me a rag, and she gave me a handkerchief. The old witch gave the girl a slap and flew out to the dog. Why didn't you tear the girl to shreds? Baba Yaga shouted at the dog. In all the years I've served you, you've never given me more than a few crumbs of bread, and the girl gave me an entire loaf, answered the dog. Baba Yaga flew at the rusted old gates. Why didn't you creak and moan to sound the alarm? The girl was escaping. In all the years I've been here, you have never given us a drop of water. The girl gave us oil. Baba Yaga slammed the gates in temper, and she flew at the birch tree. Why didn't you beat your branches and scratch the girl, shouted the old hag. In all the years I've stood here, replied the birch tree, you have never tied me up with as much as a thread or old wire string. The girl gave me a beautiful satin ribbon. All these answers put Baba Yaga into a rage of fury. She scolded and beat them all, gnashing her iron teeth. She jumped into her mortar, which she drove with a pestle to give chase to the young girl, and she hid her tracks by sweeping the broom. The girl ran and ran as fast as she could, listening all the while for the sound of the witch's approach. When she heard Baba Yaga getting close, she threw the towel, as the cat had told her. Before her eyes, it spread out into a wide, deep, and dangerous river that the mortar could not cross. The witch went back to her cottage, where she got a few cattle. She drove the cattle to the river and forced them to drink until the river was no more. Baba Yaga jumped into her mortar once again and pursued the little girl. Bang, 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 beat the pestle on the ground, and the little girl was petrified with fear. She thought of the comb that the cat had told her to take from the shelf, and she threw it at once in the direction of the horrible noise. Immediately, a dense forest, thick with vines, rose up. It filled in the area so quickly it began to block out the sunlight and made it dark. 
The little girl did not want to wait for the witch to arrive. She turned and kept running as fast as she could. When Baba Yaga arrived at the forest, it was too thick for her to break. She screamed and gnashed her iron teeth and banged her pestle on the ground in temper. Finally, she turned and flew back to her cottage on chicken's legs. The little girl didn't stop running until she could see her little cottage. She was afraid to go into the house for the sake of her stepmother, so she went into the stone shed to look for the mouse. Run inside, kind girl, squeaked the mouse. Your father is home, and you must tell him what happened. The little girl ran into the house, and when the little girl's father saw her, he asked her where she had been. Why are you so pale, and why are you out of breath, my sweet girl, he asked. The stepmother turned red with rage at the sight of the girl, and her eyes burned like hot coals. The girl sat on her father's knee, for she was not afraid, and began her story. When the father heard the truth about how his wife had sent his daughter to be eaten by Baba Yaga, he was so angry he chased her out of the house and told her never to return. From then on, the girl and her father lived in the cottage together, and the days became happy and fun once again. They once again had pancakes with jam for breakfast and played peekaboo. The little mouse came to live in the house with the little girl and her father, and every morning he would join them at the breakfast table where he would eat crumbs and warm his paws by the heat of the little girl's teacup. The end.